I've got to give a little background on this video. I recorded it a few years ago, but I never shared it. It's called Five Things You Could Do to Have an After Merry Christmas. I probably didn't share it because I talk about eliminating, you know, going to the bathroom. I talk about farting in public, and one of the five things has a mention that is a biblical reference. Well, here's the thing. I think the mention of eliminating is fine. I'm over it. The farting in public is fine, too. It makes sense given the context. And the biblical reference is kind of funny because just a week ago, I declared publicly on Facebook that I've been called to ministry. Honestly, it's silly that I wouldn't share anything biblical. I'm over that too. Another thing is, I'm posting this video in December of 2020 during a worldwide crisis. People are social distancing, there are lockdowns, schools are closed, so are restaurants. Nothing where there could be a crowd gathering. So when you hear me say you've probably been to lots of Christmas parties, remember this video that I'm sharing was recorded a few years before 2020. It's all still relevant and I never should have held it back in the first place. And one more thing, I do so many things that are not connected to YouTube or any social media platform. For example, I'm providing a free video series on goal setting really soon that you may not hear about if you aren't connected to me via email. So if you don't want to miss out, go into the description box and click on the link to connect with me. You'll also get something cool and free when you do. Say hi to me in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think of this video. All right, so this is five things that we can do to have an after Merry Christmas. Christmas is a bit difficult for a lot of people. Um, it is difficult even after it's over, and there's a lot of reasons for that. It could be that it was a real letdown, that it wasn't what you thought it would be. It could be because um, you were really alone, and now you're faced with that kind of feeling, like, geez, that sucked, because that's why a lot of people have a really hard time with Christmas, because it, it's a lonely time for a lot of people. Um, it also could be because it was great, and now you're left with feeling like, you know, kind of like an emptiness, because it was so, so nice before, and it's not so great now. The first thing is to take it easy on yourself, okay? Take it easy on yourself. This time of year is difficult for even the Martha Stewarts of the world. People who are more left-brained are very, very detail-minded, and we are not that. We're more right-brained, so we're more scattered by nature, we're more spontaneous, and so these, these kind of things that have to have a lot of planning and um, preparation for them, we tend to not do so great with them. So if we don't have a system in place, it can really throw us for a loop. So go easy on yourself, realizing that you're not the only one and that the people who are really, really together, they're not having the easiest time of it right now either. Okay. The next thing I have a little cheat sheet right here that I'm, I'm reading. The next thing is take a checkup from the neck up. Okay. After Christmas, I have to read this. All right. Just so that I don't ramble. After Christmas can be even more emotionally draining than the actual holidays themselves. Do some self-care. Here's the second thing to do, okay? Do some self-care. Acknowledge any pain that you have, right? Anything, that, any kind of pain, anything that you feel like a boo-boo in your heart that you feel, all right? And then don't stuff it down. We tend to stuff things down or not acknowledge them at all and kind of run away from pain because who likes pain? But the thing is, is that unless we address the pain, it always stays there. God says that in the Bible, it says that we can be wounded in the spirit. So what happens if you have a physical wound and you ignore it? It gets worse and worse, right? You have to take care of a wound so that it can get better. Now, emotionally, that's the same thing. If we don't acknowledge emotional wounds, they just get worse. But we don't like to feel that way, so we ignore it. And since it's not something that you could see in the natural, then we think it really doesn't exist. But if you could be wounded in the spirit, what does that mean? It means that in the natural, you feel you look just fine. But in the spirit, you might be in a wheelchair or a walker or walking with a cane, right? So we want to acknowledge our wounds. And how do we do that? We feel the pain. You know, we, we acknowledge that it exists, right? And we ask God to heal us, you know, that now to be healed of things like that, sometimes we have to forgive, right? Now, forgiving somebody doesn't mean what you did was okay. 
It means that I am going to let go of that. I'm not going to hold on to that anymore. So you're going to let go of something that maybe somebody hurt you with, and that is now addressing a pain, all right? So that's one thing that, you know, when, when we have heart hurt in our heart, or even we're holding on to something that we could be letting go of, like like something that we've done to hurt someone or some or an embarrassing thing that we did and we keep beating ourselves up over it. Let it go. Let it go. There's a verse in the Bible also that says that God casts our sins as far as the east is from the west and he remembers them no more. So if God for, can forget the baloney that we've done, then we can too. We can forget it for ourselves. He forgets it. We can. Now this time of year is Christmas. Now if you celebrate Christmas, you're a Christian. What did Jesus come for? He came so that we could have life and that we could have it more than abundantly. He came so that we can have forgiveness of sins. So take that celebration that we have now and say, all right, I'm going to let go of it. All the stupid stuff I did, all the crap I'm beating myself up about. And you know, the stuff that we beat ourselves up about, it doesn't even have to be like horrible things. Sometimes we just beat ourselves up because we farted in public or because we, we said something stupid to somebody. We're like, oh, what did I say that for? Right? Nothing malicious, just dumb or something like that. So just let it all go. Jesus doesn't care about it, we shouldn't either. And that's how we address those wounds in our spirit, okay? Once we do that, another verse in the Bible says that a merry does like a good medicine. So get something on that makes you laugh. Get something on that makes you happy. Put on some co a comedy and laugh. Um, put on some music that you really, really like and makes your heart joyful, okay? It's, part, it's like pouring on healing balm on your wound, okay? So that's another thing you can do. Another thing is make a little housework plan. This time of year, we tend to have a lot of stuff out now. Like, even if you did clean up after your dinner and everything like that, still there's probably a wreck around the house. So make a little plan for yourself. I have a great video that um, is on YouTube. I think I have 60,000 views on it. And it's about taking 15 minutes in, in one room and then doing something for, with a timer on for 15 minutes in the kitchen and then going 15 minutes in the living room and then maybe 15 minutes in the dining room or the bathroom and then go back to the kitchen kitchen. 15, 15, 15. It goes a lot quicker that way. We don't feel like we're drained, like being in the kitchen, working in the kitchen for a half an hour or an hour. And also you can see a lot of progress in just 15 minutes. So it encourages you to keep on going. Okay. So that's another thing. All right. That's the third thing. Now we're on number four. If you don't have to get up for work tomorrow, okay. Or in the next few days, all right, if you don't have to get up for work tomorrow or you don't have to get up for work in the next few days, get up and shower, dress, and groom first thing. It does something to the inside of you. It makes you feel more important. It makes you feel more productive. It makes you feel happier, and it gets you moving on your feet. So that's one thing that you can do. Now, if you do go, go to work in um, during tomorrow and you are going to be waking up and showering anyway, then wake up a half an hour earlier than you normally do and give yourself that little piece of time to have some peace. I know it's going to feel like, how is that making me, you know, doing anything good for me because now I'm losing some sleep, but it gives you a real sense of peace where you're not like spilling out of the front door. You have some sense of dignity to your day. You're able to make eye contact with that person that you live with. Maybe it's your child. Maybe it's your spouse. Maybe it's both. And to have a little bit of a conversation. If you're alone, it gives you some kind of a feeling that you're on top of your day. You're not like rushing around like like a, like a chasing your tail, all right? So that's the thing that you do if you um, already do get up and shower, dress, and groom right away, all right? The other thing to do is make your bed, all right? So this is the fifth thing. Make your bed. Even if your room is a wreck, all right? If your bed, if your sheets need to be changed, and of course, you know, if it's way too late and you can't change them now, then make sure that you make a plan tomorrow to change the sheets. And then make your bed, make your bed, whether your room is good or not, and even if you're about to get in it. This way, when you're about to get in your bed, I'm telling you, it feels different. It gives you a level of importance for yourself that changes a lot of things. All of these things are very subtle messages that we're giving to ourselves that we're important and that our life's important. Now I'm going to give you a bonus one. Drink more water, right? And have a salad 
and create a little bedtime routine for yourself, okay? And now, the reason for this, and it's real important that you do this, especially this time of year, is because we have been abusing our bodies since Halloween. So if you're in the United States, Halloween starts with big bowls of chocolate. So you have been stuffing down chocolate since October. November came and you had Thanksgiving. And so what did you do in Thanksgiving? You ate and ate and ate and ate and had parties and stuff. Then you went to parties because Christmas time's coming and you baked. So you're eating raw cookie dough, you're baking cookies that people bring into work, you're eating more dessert, you eat more fried food because there's lots of, you know, if you're a Spitalian especially, lots of galamad, right? Um, I know the pierogies are, are a big thing for Polish people. So those are fried, right? Lots of fried foods, lots of foods we don't normally eat. We overeat also. So our bodies are not really in great shape so if you drink more water if you commit yourself to drinking more water then you'll dilute some of that poison in your body all right make it easier to go to the bathroom too which is so necessary to get rid of the poison eat big a big salad every day not only is it live food and helps you because it has enzymes in it and we need enzymes and it's live food so it's really really good for you it also like i said again which you know we don't really don't like to talk about going to the bathroom but it's really important you go to the bathroom you eliminate better it also one other thing is it fills you up a little bit more so does the water so that what happens if it fills you up a little bit more you eat less junk food okay you eat less junk food so it doesn't mean you're not going to because it's still all around but you're going to eat less of it all right and another thing to do is give yourself a little bit of a bed routine go to sleep a little bit earlier right and shower put on some nice pajamas you know even if you don't have any nice pajamas put on a sweatsuit or something like that something decent and get rid of all of your junk clothes that you say oh, I'm just gonna sleep in these you send yourself a message like I said there's these subtle messages that we send ourselves that says I'm not important uh, people outside of my house are more important than I am people that I don't even know are more important than my family because why we, we dress for them don't we so we have to really realize what's going on and what's going on is that we're telling ourselves all of those things that I'm not that important so when you do get yourself dressed for bed and all of that it's like you're the executive of your life you're the the master of your universe you are taking care of yourself because you're worthy how many people feel like they're not worthy well we're sending ourselves those messages all the time so this is something that I just wanted to share that is something that we can do to you know like really like cream the aftermath of what happens to us right after Christmas and also to help us to get set up a nice nicely for the new year okay um, if you're not part of my peeps then please go to the tidytutor.com and put in your name and email and I could send you a link to that video I talked about that had 60,000 views if you um, are not if you haven't liked this page please like it all right okay take care everybody love this